The Empire was cruel and cunning at the best of times, and it would have never allowed a rebel force to occupy even a speck of its territory without serious repercussions. But this wasn't actually up to the Empire. We know that it is one of the greatest military forces ever to be seen in the galaxy, but even with its sheer amount of soldiers, weapons, and ships, this pales in comparison to the general population of the galaxy. So how exactly did the Empire ensure loyalty and stop its citizens from supporting any resistance groups? Now, this video is going to be very much theory based, and there are a few parts of information that do support what I'm saying, but to me this seems like the most likely way in which the Empire managed to maintain control over the general populace, and how Palpatine kept the masses against the rebellion. I mean, after all, we see a lot of people don't like the Empire, so why wouldn't they join a rebellion that promised democracy? So granted, there was the Imperial's military, but as I said, there was more than enough people to be able to, in theory at least, kick out the Empire. So it is my opinion that the Empire managed to keep the rebellion in check via false flag operations. Now, a false flag operation is when an attack is carried out in order to mislead one party as to who the attack is being carried out by. There's a lot of real world examples of this, but the one I'm going to use just in Star Wars, for example, is if the Empire wanted to commit a heinous act upon some of its own people, say, destroying a homestead, it then goes and it kills the occupants and burns it to the ground. The perpetrators will then make it appear as if it was the rebels who did this, leaving a small paper trail if you will, so anybody who then looks at it will be able to say, oh yes, it was the rebels who came and destroyed this homestead. The Empire can then go and widely report that the rebels are bloodthirsty murderers to scare the local population. It also means that the Empire can bring out a few prisoners, and these prisoners may not even be related to the Rebel Alliance in any form, force a confession out of them, and then the Empire can make themselves look like heroes for bringing the perpetrators of this heinous crime to justice and avenging its citizens. Now, you may be thinking, and rightfully so, that this sounds an incredible amount like the Clone Wars, with Palpatine disguising his own motives behind that of the Separatists, and you'd be right. We know that Sidious does prefer to work in the shadows and to manipulate people over direct confrontation. So a false flag operation in the Empire would make a huge amount of sense. Especially when we consider how cloak and dagger the Empire could actually be. They had many, many different factions within the ISB and Imperial Intelligence, and I think it's very likely that they would have undoubtedly had no objections to doing a false flag operation if it meant discrediting the rebels. We also need to remember that the Empire also controlled the Holonet, which is like the galaxy-wide source of all news and information. For this reason, the Empire can lie all it wants, even if something goes wrong, for example, due to Imperial negligence, a fuel refinery explodes and a bunch of workers die. They could pass it off as a rebel attack. At the end of the day, the Empire controls the narrative, and since they have this, they're able to control what keeps the people of the galaxy up at night. So, to an everyday citizen who regularly tunes into the Holonet, which is nearly every single citizen, and gets the news, they would probably be terrified of meeting a rebel. Because they'll have heard the stories, they'll have seen the evidence of burning homestead saying it was a rebel attack, and most people would probably view the Rebel Alliance, for example, as being a mostly alien group that wants nothing more than to kill you and take your stuff. So sure, the Empire was annoying and a pain and bureaucratic and oftentimes pretty damn cruel, but it's a lot better than the alternative. It rationalises the Empire's behaviour. Now, of course, the Rebellion would argue its innocence, and people came into contact with Rebels often had a good experience with them. They were often very compassionate. Um, however, it really does depend which Rebel group you come into contact with. For example, if you met Saul Guerrero, for example, nobody was saying that they really had a good experience with him. However, the Rebels don't have the reach that the Empire does, they don't have control of the Holonet, and they will always be outmatched by Imperial manpower. Ultimately, the use of false flag operations and control over the media will have allowed Palpatine and his higher up goons to basically do whatever they want. You want to seize land from farmers. You could orchestrate a rebel attack and either simply wipe the farmers out and then take control of the land, or you could use the attacks as a reason to rationalise evicting them and then you take the land anyway. You want to get rid of that other moth who's really becoming a pain? 
Simple, have him assassinated and leave a paper trail suggesting it was an act by the rebels. Your ex-competitor is now being hailed as a martyr who was killed for holding up imperial ideals. And no one's going to ask questions because he's dead now. And it was just another faceless rebel attack. Essentially, this entire tactic allows the Imperials to get away with anything, and it prevents the Rebels from being able to recruit a lot of people who really it was in their best interest to join them. But what do you guys think? Would Palpatine and his military slash governing leaders have used these false flag operations, and how successful do you believe that they will have been? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video, if so please remember to like, share and sub as it is really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell and I'll see you next time.